Fusion 360, Organization, and Color Cycling. Welcome to another episode. When I'm working with assemblies that have a number of parts in the assembly, I find it really helpful to have the different parts shown in different colors because then it's easy to see you know, where one part ends and the next one begins. Fusion 360 has a really nice way of doing this, which is uh, the color cycling feature. So I'm going to show you some things I've learned about it uh, and uh, the, some of the benefits of it that uh, weren't at first obvious to me. The other thing I'm going to talk about a little bit is uh, some organization practices you can use when your assembly starts to get uh, larger. So a lot of the videos that I've seen, people have fairly simple parts or fairly simple assemblies with not necessarily a lot of history. But I, I have uh, some designs where the history is getting to be too long so the history doesn't fit on the screen, all of the history at the same time. Anyway, let's head to the computer and I'll show you, I think, four different uh, things that I've learned. I always like to test my designs before I get uh, even start to think about uh, creating the mold. In this particular case, the way I do it, and in a lot of cases these days, is to use my 3D printer, which is just a, a standard consumer-grade 3D printer. Um, now, it takes uh, each of these is two halves. You can see I have a top half and a bottom half and they take about an hour and 20 minutes to print on my 3D printer. Uh, one of the things I'm working on right now is the, the fit of some of the things. So if I turn the bottom off, you can see here we have a place for screw holes to hold the, the top and bottom half together. And then here's a little holder for uh, a toggle switch. And it's done this way with some ribs uh, for injection molding purposes, because if you have too much plastic on this side, you can end up with uh, sink marks here, which mar the uh, the physical appearance on the outside. So to keep from having to print the whole thing, uh, one of the things I do fairly often is I'll cut it off to make it a lot smaller. And the cutoff is done with a sketch that I created here, um, temp sketch. You can see that sketch is I'll back up and you can see it's uh, basically going through most of the top and the bottom. Uh, one of the things that I discovered, which I didn't know, is uh, that Fusion puts two colors above this particular operation because it applies to both the top and bottom components. You'll notice here that uh, what I have is going on right now is I've, I've enabled this option which is component color cycling. Uh, and what that will do is it'll give each of the components a, its own separate color. Uh, I can turn that off and you can see it goes just to the colors that I've selected. Uh, I've selected blue as the color for the plastic. So if I turn that back on, you can see it's easier to see what's going on when you have an assembly with a bunch of different parts. Now, the other thing that happens, which is really handy, is it puts that same color above each of the operations in the history. What I saw yesterday for the first time is this particular operation had both colors above it. In other words, it had the color of both components. Now, the reason that's the case is because when I selected to cut, I expanded objects to cut and I selected both bodies. So each body has a separate color and therefore both of the colors appeared on top of the operation. I thought that was pretty cool. I uh, wanted to show that to you and also give you an idea of the trick that I use when I'm uh, trying to get the fit and finish on parts to be close to correct. And I say close to correct because the 3D printer is off by about uh, 200 microns. I'm not sure what that is in inches. I'd have to do the calculation, uh, but 0.2 millimeters from what it would be with injection molding. So things like these holes here tend to tend to be about uh, 0.2 millimeters smaller when 3D printed than I designed them to be. Now that I've been working on this for a while, you can see this assembly is getting pretty complicated in that there are a whole bunch of operations here. In fact, there are so many operations that they don't fit. You can see there's a little dash dash down here and there's a scroll bar above. So if I scroll across, you can see they're really an awful lot. And it's also pretty difficult to see what's going on. So the first thing I'd like to do is turn on component color cycling. 
because now what that does is show you the colors of the components. So you can see here uh, I've got this uh, kind of orange, light orange color, which represents the TFT screen, and then I have some over here as well. The next thing I'd like to do is group the, the colors that are uh, similar together when I can. You can't always do that. So I'm going to take the, the, the screen ones from here on the right side. Uh, the way I did that is first I click, and then I hold down the shift key and click on the end. Now I can click and drag and put these with the rest of the screen ones. Okay, so I've got a little bit better organization. The next thing I'm going to do is let me go all the way to the left here. And on the left you can see I've got all of these parts here which are all of these uh, operations that are part of the top. So again, I'll click and then shift click to select them all. And then right click and say create group. That condenses them all into the single group here with 31 operations. I can then rename this to top. So now I can simply hover over this and it'll tell me this is the top group. Likewise, I can click on the top and it'll put little cross hatches in there to tell me that uh, this is the group that contains operations for the top. I'll go ahead and do that with other parts. So let's see, this, I'm not sure what this is. This is the screen here. I'll create a group out of that. And then here we have the bottom half. So oh, again, we have a couple outliers here. So I'll drag those so that they're connected. And then I'll select this group again, right click, create group, and then right click and rename to bottom. Now, I just noticed something interesting. So here, when there aren't too many operations, it'll show you a, a pop-up when you hover over it of the operations that are in that group. Again, here you can see the operations. But in this case, when there are too many, I'm not sure what the threshold is, then it just shows you a summary of how many they are. So this is a great way to take a fairly complicated assembly and make it a lot more manageable. Let me show you another example of where having the color cycling turned on can be really helpful. What I'm going to do is add a construction plane. And I want it to be midway between this plane and this plane. And by the way, these two planes, um, this warning is, by the way, is telling me that um, I need to turn on visibility of that. But these two, by the way, are not parallel to each other because of the draft. Uh, you can see right there, there's an angle here and here. Even so, I can create the mid-plane, which is really cool. So all of this looks good, but have you noticed the mistake that I made? The mistake I made is I forgot to activate the top. And this is clearly visible down here because you can see the color above the mid-plane is a different color from the top component. So this color here, which is a light cyan, is the same as the assembly. And the purple color is the same as the top. That's really easy to fix. I can just go ahead and delete this. And then make sure that I activate top. And then do the mid-plane again. And now you can see it has the same color, which means it's now part of that component, which is what I wanted. I just uh, stumbled across another really cool feature about uh, the color cycling. So I like to have the color component color cycling turned on so that I can see what's going on in the, the timeline at the bottom or the history at the bottom. But sometimes I want to have it turned off so that I can see the actual colors on my model. And now I've lost the color cycling down here. But then I just ran into this. There's this um, uh, gear down here, and you can turn on compo component color cycling for the history without having it turned on for your model. So that's really cool because now you can see when you accidentally uh, forget to activate one of the components before you make a change because the color will be wrong down here. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you have and you'd like to be notified when I, I publish new videos, please subscribe. Also make sure you press the or click on the, the bell icon. That will make sure that you get an email when I publish a new video. 
Thanks again for watching and see you next time.